Hello, shameless writers. I'm Kristen McTiernan, the Nonsense Free Editor, here to give you your weekly dose of writing wisdom. I'm back this month with 100% more face. Last month I was traveling quite a bit, so I use the avatar since hotel rooms aren't terribly attractive, and, if I can be honest, I didn't really do my makeup a lot while I was traveling, so the avatar was really more for your benefit than for mine. October is nonfiction month, and we'll be discussing the five best-selling nonfiction genres that you as an author can market. Specifically, we'll be discussing how you as the author can perfect them and thus sell more copies. The genres we'll be discussing are religious and inspirational, best-selling in nonfiction, memoirs and biography, number two, business and money, self-help, and health and fitness. This week, we're starting with memoirs though they are admittedly the number two best-selling nonfiction genre, at least on Amazon. They are the number one genre I receive as a professional editor. Over the past 11 years, I feel comfortable saying I have edited at least 1,000 memoirs. Nearly all of them suffered from the same types of unforced errors, all of which would have been prevented if the author had started with a solid outline for their memoir, which is exactly what we'll be discussing today. In addition to the video, I've included a link below for an outline that you can use while constructing your memoir. Even if you're at the very beginning of your writing journey, the worksheet will assist you as you organize your memories and decide exactly what you want your memoir to be about. My first tip for outlining your memoir is to structure it like fiction. This what started you on your journey. This journey can be emotional or physical, as everyone's life and everyone's message is different. What conflicts exist in your memoir, both internal and external? What is the all is lost moment? Not to mention the climax and the resolution. Identifying these crucial plot points will make constructing your scenes much easier. It can be extremely hard to choose which elements of your life belong in the memoir and which parts don't. What makes a memoir different from a biography is it's not simply a catalog of everything that you've gone through. It's a carefully curated list of life events that is designed to communicate a specific message. Which brings me to my next point. Decide on your theme. When someone miss about you, per se, chances are they don't know who you are. Rather, they're picking up your book because of the theme that you're writing on. They don't want to read about you, Jane Doe, or whatever your name is. They want to read about overcoming addiction, dealing with obesity, dealing with any kind of a health crisis. They want to know about climbing out of poverty by starting a small business. Generally, unless you're a presidential candidate or a former secretary of state, you're not going to be selling your memoirs off your name or picture. I apologize for the engine noise. It's Sunday and I have neighbors with motorcycles. <laughs> Though you might not be as famous as a presidential candidate, you still have the ability to touch the hearts and minds of readers on an international scale with your memoir if you choose your theme carefully and construct your scene list around that theme. Next up, make your scene list. Once you've decided on your theme so you know the appropriate plot points to hit, you need to select which scenes of your life will contribute to this story. This can include backstory, which are events that take place before the time span that your memoir takes place during. Just keep that to a minimum. Keep in mind that all of my admonishment against info dumps still applies for a memoir. There are many things that happened in your life. All of them, in some way or another, contributed to who you are as a person. But not all of them contribute to the existing theme of your memoir. So be ruthless in your scene selection. I think you're doing this on purpose, Gemma. Don't be afraid. It goes for while you're writing it, and of course, in the self-editing phase. Once you have your scene list, put them in order. And I don't necessarily mean chronological order. Like all good books, you want to start off with a bang. You want to get your readers' attention and keep them coming back for more. Often, because memoirs aren't necessarily as exciting as a car chase, this will involve a prologue. Often people argue against prologues, which is odd to me. I like them in general. For memoirs, they're often necessary. You don't want to start things off slow and get off on the wrong track with your reader. Also, do your due diligence. As part of your outline, put a star next to anybody's name who appears in your story that you'll need to get a release from. Put a different symbol next to someone that you will need to obscure. And I don't just mean changing their name. 
you need to change their height, you need to change their gender if you possibly can. The reason you need to obscure these people is because you're going to be writing unflattering things about them. I think you'll find it very unusual for someone to have an Ashton Kutcher-like zen regarding unflattering memoir portrayals. Libel laws are different in every country, and especially if you live in Ireland or the UK, be very, very careful. If you're going to be writing unflattering things about someone, even if it's all true, you might find yourself getting sued for libel, so disguise them well. If you want a deeper dive into how to create your memoir, specifically how to find the courage to write your own story, give this video a click and enjoy my full speech. As always, if you like this content, please like, share, and subscribe. It really helps me grow on YouTube. Next week, we'll be talking about writing Christian inspirational nonfiction, so be sure to tune in for that. Until then, take care and write well.